Okay, all praise to the most high. So again, tonight's topic is called Wise and Foolish Virgins. Wise and Foolish Virgins. Give me John 16, okay? Give me John chapter 16. Um, let's start at verse 1. John 16, verse 1. Let's start there. John chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Read that again. John chapter 16, verse 1. Mm -hmm. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. That ye should not be offended. He says, these things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Watch this. Hold this. We're coming back here. Give me the book of Luke. Okay. Give me Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, verse 23. Read that. Luke chapter 7, verse 23. Read. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now, this is Christ speaking again. He says, blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. What we understand, what it means to be blessed. Give me that in Revelation. Revelation chapter 22. Verse 14, come on. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Read. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. He said, blessed are they that do his commandments. The key word is do, an action word. Blessed are they that do his commandments because if you apply God's commandments, when the, when the understanding comes out, you will not be offended. That's what Christ said, what he said. Go back to Luke now. Chapter 7, verse 23 again. Luke chapter 7, verse 23. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. That's why a lot of the times when Christ taught, he taught in parables, and a lot of the times our forefathers did not understand, and they were offended because why? Remember what he said. He says, blessed are they whosoever shall not be offended in me. So if you keep God's commandments, when, they, when he teaches in parables and all, you will not be confounded. Why? Because the commandments is a gateway for you to understand these deep understandings, these parables, these proverbs, and so forth. Give me John 6, verse 59. I'll give an example of what he meant. Um, give me John 6, not 59, but give John 6, verse 48. We went over this sometime. John 6, 48, read that. John chapter 6, verse 48. Go ahead. I am that bread of life. As this is Christ speaking. He's speaking to the disciples and those that followed him as well. He says, I am that bread of life. Okay, go ahead. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. He says, our forefathers, they ate manna in the wilderness and they are dead. Go ahead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. So when he says, this is the bread which, came, which cometh down from heaven, he's speaking over their heads. Because what is he telling them? He's Give me that in 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians, because this is what he's really going into. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, start verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. The Red Sea, go ahead. And were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So now when our forefathers was baptized, he says they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea because Moses then didn't dip anybody in water. You understand? So when he says they were baptized unto Moses, give me that in Deuteronomy 4 verse 44 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 4, when he says they were all baptized. Okay? Because Moses did not dip anybody in water. So how did he baptize our forefathers in the wilderness? Watch this. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 44. Go ahead. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. You see that thing? This is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. So Moses taught the children of Israel the law as he received it from the Most High. Go ahead. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel, 
and they came forth out of Egypt. After they came forth out of Egypt. So let's go back. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2 again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 2. Read. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. You see what it's saying? So how did Moses baptize our forefathers? He taught them the law. He said the law before them. You understand? Choose life that thou, both thou and thy seed may live. You understand? If you choose something different, you're going to die. Go ahead. And did all eat this, the same spiritual meat? You see what he's saying? And they did all eat the same spiritual meat. That same spiritual meat he's talking about is talking about what? He's talking about the manna that came down. You understand? He's talking about the manna that came down. He says, and did all eat the same spiritual meat? Go ahead. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? He's going to tell you the, the meat and the drink. What is he making reference to? Go ahead. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Mm. And that rock was Christ. You see that thing? That rock was Christ. So the Apostle Paul is, is, is bringing some heavy information here. You understand? So the spiritual meat and the spiritual drink. Let's go to John 6. Go to John 6 now. John chapter 6 and verse 55. Watch this. You know what? Read verse 51. We're going to read down. John chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eats of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, uh -huh. which, I will, which I will give for the life of the world. Which I will give for the 12 tribes of Israel. So now he's making it clear in verse 51 what that bread is, the bread of life. He's talking about himself because he was going to do what? He was going to die. He was going to sacrifice himself for the 12 tribes of Israel. So he's that spiritual meat and that spiritual drink. You understand? Because his flesh was used as a sacrifice and the blood of Christ is what covered us, what covers us now. What, what atoned for our sins so that we can what? We can get the chance to get the kingdom. Okay? Keep going. Re uh, keep reading. Verse 52. Uh-huh. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us flesh to eat? Give us his flesh to eat. So now they are complaining. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So they thought he was talking literal, but he was meaning spiritually. You understand? That's why they were keep they were they kept getting offended. Okay, read. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Now he's, he's, listen, he's just stepping it up. He says, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So now they are thinking cannibalism now. Does this brother think we're going to be eating, you know, feasting on his flesh like that? Because they're thinking about it literally. But he wasn't talking about that. Go ahead. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. Uh -huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. Because now we are in the last days. Now what I want to show you is that he says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood. Notice he is not making it plain even. The more they are saying what they are saying, he is making it even more vague. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He's not making it any plainer. Now he's eating any more parables. Go ahead. Verse 55. For my flesh is meat indeed, uh -huh. and my blood is drink indeed. You see what he's saying? For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Meaning what? We're going to have to accept the sacrifice that Christ made. You understand? Plus, keeping of the commandments, we must accept his sacrifice. You understand? That his blood, that's how we are going to overcome. The same way we overcome by the blood of the animals, which didn't make us perfect. Now, under Christ, the blood of Christ is going to make us perfect. That's what he's saying, Ray. Go ahead. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. Go ahead. 
as the living father hath sent me and i live by the father so that so he that eateth me even he shall live by me read that again john chapter 6 verse 57 as the living father hath sent me and i live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall live by me so now what christ is saying he says it says what it says as the living father hath sent me as i live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall live by me so what does that mean give me that in psalms chapter 40 real quick i'm just you know i'm going around the world just to make it plain what christ is really going over and it's gonna it's gonna make sense um Give me that in Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Read that. Psalms chapter 40 verse 7. Go ahead. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Mm -hmm. So what he's saying is that, he says, learn the whole Bible. You understand? Learn the whole Bible. He says what? It says, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and as I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. So how are we going to eat the flesh of the Son of Man? You learn this Bible. Now, because we are under grace, we must study this Bible and apply because we still get a chance to get the kingdom. You understand? Because there is no more sacrifices after this. He was the ultimate sacrifice. You understand? Go, go back to John 6 now. Read verse 58. John chapter 6, verse 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. You see what he's saying? It says, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread, we talk about himself, shall live forever. You understand? Meaning they're going to get eternal life. Go ahead. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Read. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? You see what he's saying? This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? Meaning, who can understand what he's saying? And remember, he was teaching in the synagogues, where, whether the Jews always resort, like we read in John 18, verse 20. So that this is how he taught. Okay, go ahead. When Jesus knew in himself, that his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, Does this offend you? Does this offend you? Because they were offended. Why? Because they did not understand. Because why? Because they did not believe on what he was teaching. The majority of them, that's why many of them, they left. You understand? They left. They stopped walking with Christ. That's why many of his disciples, jump down, where's that? I think it's the same chapter. Hmm. He says, many of this, many of, yeah, read verse 64. John chapter 6, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Read that again. I'm sorry. John chapter 6, verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. You see, now the point is this. He knew that they, many of them, they didn't believe it. You understand? Read verse 66 now. Verse 66. From that time, many of disciples went back and walked no more with him. Many of them, you see what he's saying? From that time, many of his disciples went back, meaning went back into the world and walked no more with him. Why? Because they didn't believe. And he, he spoke like that for a reason. Now, let's go back to John 16 now. John 16 verse 1 again. John chapter 16 verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4, but these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you, that I told you of them. 
And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. Now that's heavy right there. Read that again, verse 4. John chapter 16, verse 4. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. You see what he's saying? He says, but these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, when, when the time comes, ye may remember that I told you of them. What is that time is making reference to now, the last days, that you may remember? And these things, go ahead. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. You see what he's saying? He says, I said not these things at the beginning because I was with you. Because Christ walked with them. He walked with them. They were among, he was among them. You understand? He says, because I was with you. So now today, in these last days, Christ is with us. You understand? The spirit of Christ is what's in us now. He's with us and he's bringing these things that he told us before during the time when he walked the earth that we will remember these things and his spirit will bring those things to us to our remembrance. We will remember these things. That's what we're remembering right now. Okay, now watch this. Jump down to verse 25 now. Come on. Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. But that's when he, when, when he returns. He's going to clarify a lot of things for us. But right now, the basic things is keep the commandments, get the kingdom. Everything else will be revealed on that day when he, when he returns. Read that again, verse 25. John chapter 6, verse 25. Read. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. In what? In Proverbs. In Proverbs, meaning in parables. Come on. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. Now watch this. Let's go to, let's go to Matthew now. Matthew 25. Let's start at verse 1. Matthew 25, verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Read. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Read that again, verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now we need to understand the kingdom of heaven is what? Rulership on earth, right? Watch this. Give me Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. He says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Let's deal with the kingdom of heaven. Read that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. Come on. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So now it says, and this gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, who does it belong to? Give me that in First Chronicles real quick. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 28. First Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 5. Read that. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 5. Read. And all of my sons, for the Lord had given me many sons. Mm -hmm. He hath chosen, he hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Read that again. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons. Read. He hath chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. So now the kingdom of the Lord is Israel. Israel. Israel is the kingdom of the Lord. Israel is the kingdom of the Lord. That's what you need to understand. Israel is the kingdom of the Lord. So when he says the kingdom of heaven, I will liken it unto ten virgins. He's talking about Israel. The kingdom of the Lord is talking about the nation of Israel ruling on earth. But we are the kingdom of the Lord. You understand? So go back to Matthew now. 25 verse 1. You know what? Give me Matthew 11. 
Matthew 11 verse 12. Watch this. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. Until the what? King, until now. From the days of John the Baptist. Remember, it was during the time of Rome. From the time of John the Baptist until now. Go ahead. Until now. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven does what? The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. So it's not talking about the most high God, the most high God's kingdom up there in the heavens. No, it's talking about the kingdom of heaven here on earth suffering violence. So this is letting you know Christ is not talking about where the most high God is dwelling in the third heaven. No, here on earth. The kingdom of heaven was suffering violence. You understand? Go ahead. And the violent take it by force. And the violent take it, take the kingdom, the kingdom from Israel by force. Who was the violent? That's that's Rome. Because who was ruling during this time? Rome was ruling. So the kingdom of heaven suffered violence because the white man took the kingdom from Israel by force. You understand? 70 AD, when the kingdom was completely wiped out, destroyed. You understand? But even when Christ walked the earth, we was in captivity under Rome. So the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent took the kingdom from Israel by force. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Okay, give me Psalms 140. Give me Psalms 140 verse 1. Watch this. Psalms chapter 140, verse 1. Come on. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Mm -hmm. Preserve me from the violent man. He says what? Preserve me from the violent man. So this violent, this evil man is the violent man. The same violent man that took the kingdom from Israel by force. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. Verse 2. Come on. Which imagine mischiefs in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Continually are they gathered together for war. So who, do you, who is he talking about? He's talking about the white man. He is the violent man. Which imagine mischiefs. Not just one mischief. Multiple in their heart. Continually meaning day in and day out. Are they gathered together for war. War against who? The saints. You understand? Watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 7. Watch this. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. To do what? And to make war with the saints. It was given unto him. The him is the beast with seven heads and ten horns. The white man. Okay. It was given unto him, this white man, to make war with the saints, okay? The kingdom of Israel by force to make war with us. Why did he make war with us? He put us in slavery. Okay, come on. That's how the kingdom of the kingdom the kingdom of heaven was suffering violence from the time of John the Baptist unto this very day, 2021. Go ahead. And to overcome them. And to overcome them. How did they, what do you mean overcome us? They conquer us. Okay, come on. And power was given him over all mm -hmm. kindreds really? and tongues and nations. You see that thing? And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Give me Psalms 23 verse 5. Power was given to this man over all kindreds, okay, tongues and nations. Psalms 23 real quick. Psalms 23 and verse. Start of verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. Read. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You see that thing? So now it says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The value of the share of death is what? Captivity. Where in that captivity, there's what? He's got power over kindred, tongues, and nations. Small nations, big nations, he was, he's got power over all of them. You understand? Now, let's go back. 
Psalms 140. Psalms 140 and verse 2 again. Psalms chapter 140, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Cornell. Continually. Read. Continually are they gathered together for war. Read. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Mm -hmm. Adder's poison is under their lips, Salah. You see what he's saying? He says, Adder's poison, meaning what? What's coming out of their mouth? What is their mouth? Media. They have the social media. They have the internet. You understand? They've got the news. All of these social media platforms and the news and the internet, the newspaper and all of that, that's their mouth. Okay? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent and as an arrow's poison is under their lips. Salah. Now go back to Matthew 11, verse 12 again. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Read. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered the violence, and the violent take it by force. And the violent, which is the Romans at that time, and to today in these last days, is the what? The white men, the Spaniards, you understand? Spain, France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, you understand? America, that's them, you understand? Rome, which is the extension of Rome, extension of the Greeks. Same thing, same race of people, okay? So when it says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, it's talking about the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. You understand? So now, let's go back to Matthew now, 25, verse 1. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Go ahead. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, so now we understand the kingdom of heaven is talking about who? The children of Israel. The 12 tribes. That's the kingdom of heaven. Okay. He says, it shall be likened unto 10 virgins. Read. Which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And went forth to meet the bridegroom. It says, he's likening us to 10 virgins. Okay. So these 10 virgins, it says, they took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Let's understand, why is he calling us virgins? Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah 3. Okay, we're going to start. I'm going pre to preface what I'm about to bring up with this. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14. Come on. Turn, O backsliding children. Saith the Lord, for I am married unto you. For I am married unto you. So Christ is married unto us. Because we are we are what? We are the backsliding children. So Christ say through Jeremiah says, For because I am married unto you. Go ahead. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family. And I will bring you to Zion. And I will bring you to Zion. So the subject matter is what? We are married unto Christ. Okay. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. You see what he's saying? He says, I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. Why? Because he's married unto us. For I have espoused you to one husband, that's Christ, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ, meaning disciplined in God's commandments. When it says we are a chaste virgin, that means what? We are no longer walking under the customs and philosophies of this world. We are born again. We bethink ourselves. We've subdued our own understanding. We are no longer being tossed to and fro like children when we used to be in the world. That's what he's saying. A chaste virgin unto Christ. Virgin unto Christ. Watch this. Give me that in Revelation 14 verse 4. Revelation chapter 14 verse 4. Read. These are they which, def which were not defiled with women. You see that part they right are there? Virgins. Hold on. These are they which were not defiled with women. Okay. Because 
who we, 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 which people bring the most the the philosophies that come to the men who's the people that mostly bring those philosophies to men women primarily these philosophies are coming through women so he's saying these are they which were not defiled with women meaning philosophies an example is what happened with even the garden okay go ahead for they are virgins for they are virgins meaning what they keep God's commandments. They will not be deceived. Go ahead. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Meaning we, they do what Christ says do. No matter how it feels, doesn't matter. It's not about how it feels. They get it done. Go ahead. These were redeemed from among men. Uh -huh. Being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. So now what you are seeing is, is these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. So what I'm showing you here is when it says virgins, it means we're not, we, we, are, we have repented. You understand? We've repented of our sins. We have confessed. We've repented. We are no longer walking after the customs of the heathens. You understand? I'll give an example. Give me Second, Chron second, second Kings. Give me Second Kings chapter 15. He says, because we are virgins, right? Watch this. Second Kings chapter 17. 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse 9, because we're going to start at verse 9, because when we was in the world, these are the things that we was doing. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 9. Read. And the children of Israel did secretly. You know what? Was, um, start at verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 8. You know what? Hold on. Read verse 7. Let's start at verse 7. We're going to read down. This is during the time when Hoshea, the son of Elah, that reigned in, in Samaria for nine years. And then the king that the Lord, the king that the Lord sent against him was uh, Shalmaneser V. Okay, come on. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 7. For it was, for so it was, that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. We have sinned Richard. against the Lord our hold on. We sinned against the Lord our God because when we was in the world, that's what we was doing. We were sinning against the Lord our God. Come on. Which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods. When he says and have feared other gods, meaning we worship other gods. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. You understand? He says they have feared, he says, and, and had feared other gods, meaning we worshipped other gods of the Egyptians. Okay? Psalms 111 verse 10. We're going to explain that part when it says they feared other gods. Read that. Psalms chapter 111 verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? Go ahead. A good understanding have all the that do his commandments. Really? His praise endureth forever. So when we fear God, we keep his commandments. We do his commandments. So when we fear other gods, we worship, we what? We, 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 we keep the customs that comes with worshiping those gods. In Egypt, we did that. You understand? So when we fear the Lord, we keep his commandments. When we fear other gods, we keep the customs and traditions that comes with worshiping those gods. Let's go back now. First, second Kings 17. Verse 8 again. No, verse 7 again. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord, had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt. For un from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, Read. and had feared other gods, and have worshipped other gods. Come on, and walked in the statutes of the heathen. You see that part right there, and walked in the statutes of the heathen. So when it says for they are virgins, is because we are no longer doing this. You understand? We are no longer doing this. We are no longer walking after the statutes of the heathens. We are no longer fearing the gods of the other nations, meaning worshiping them and buying ourselves unto them. He says, what? And they and walked in the statutes of the heathens. Give me that in Nehemiah 5 verse 9. 
Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 9. Nehemiah chapter 5 verse 9. Come on. Also I said, it is not good that ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? You see that thing? They heathen our enemies. They heathen our enemies. So go back to Second Second Kings now. 17 and verse 8. Second Kings chapter 17 verse 8. And walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. Read. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. So what was we doing before we came into this truth? We was in the midst of idolatry, worshipping other gods, keeping their customs that comes with worshipping those gods. Christmas, New Year, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, okay, New Year, Christmas, okay, breaking the Sabbath, homangering, whoring ourselves out. That's what we was doing, which is go all, which all goes back to idolatry. Okay, come on. The sin. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Stop right there. Watch this. Give me, um, give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 12 verse 2. He says, we set up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Let's see what the law says about that. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 2. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their gods. You see that thing? The so we says we must utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess. Because we, will, we would go out and possess these nations greater and mightier than ourselves. And when we get to into their dwelling places, we would find them that were worshipping other gods. We would destroy those idols. You understand? Read. Upon the high mountains and upon the hills mm -hmm. and under every green tree. Read. You see that? And the same thing that we just read in Second Kings. Go ahead. And ye shall overthrow their altars mm -hmm. and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire. Come on. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place. Meaning what? We must make sure that even not even a trace of the gods they used to worship and them exist. Let's go back. Second Kings 17 now. I'm giving an example what it means when it says a chaste virgin. Meaning what? We are no longer working after the customs of the heathens. We are now keeping God's commandments, working after our custom that the Most High God commanded unto us. Second Kings 17 verse 9. No, Second Kings. Again. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 10. Read. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. Go ahead. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. You see that thing because of our idols. Go ahead, verse 12. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Ye shall not do this thing. So, what I'm showing you is that's what this is what we used to do. And the Lord commanded us, We shall not do these things no more. Because now we are we are espoused unto a he has espoused, he espoused us unto one husband. And we are going to be presented as a chaste virgin to Christ. Meaning what? We are new creatures now in Christ. We are no longer walking after the old ways. Now we are renewed in the spirit of our minds. Give me that in 2nd Ezra 14 verse 34. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 34. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 
Sikinezus chapter 14, verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding mm-hmm. and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. You see what he's saying? After death, he says, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, meaning change the way you think, your frame of mind, your way of thinking must change completely like a newborn baby. That's what he's saying. We must subdue our own understanding. So when you are a chaste virgin, you must subdue. It means you have subdued your own understanding. You are born again and your mind is being changed. You understand? Because you are applying what is written. Give me that in um, Ephesians 4 verse 23. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see that part right there? And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. Read that again. Read it right. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24. Go ahead. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So now this new man, that this new man is because you are new because you are renewed in the spirit of your mind. Your mind being a spirit is now renewed, is changed, is brand new. You understand? It says, and you put on the new man, this new man that is born again, that has subdued his own understanding. You understand? Which after God, because before we were not after God, we was after the customs of these heathens that were around about us and we served their gods. Okay. It says, after which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now we are created in righteousness and true holiness now. Watch this. Romans 12 verse 2. Come on. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Come on. And be not conformed to this world, mm-hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye you see that part right there? Is the same thing we just read in Ephesians 4, 22 and 23 and 24. It says, you must don't be, con- don't be not conformed to this world. When you conform, I'll give an example when we did what, what, how, what it means to conform. Give me that in 2 Maccabees 6. 2 Maccabees, just during the time of the Greeks. This is how we conformed. We were forced to conform to the manners of the Greeks. 2 Maccabees 6 verse 6. We're going to read down. 2 Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to uh-huh. profess himself at all to be a Jew. So we were prohibited to what? To observe our, our Sabbath, the Sabbath days or our feasts or to profess ourselves to be Jews. It was against the law to call ourselves Jews. That's when they what? They took away our nationality, right? Yes, that with the Greeks. Go ahead. And in the day of the king's birth, every That's month. That's birthdays. Birthdays now. In the day of the king's birth, because they observe birthdays. Every month, if the king's birthday was on the 27th of August, every day on the 27th, they will observe the king's birthday. Go ahead. They were brought by bitter constraint. The bitter cons- what was the Hold on. What was the bitter constraint? The bitter constraint was that was not our custom to celebrate birthdays, to be making cakes where people worship themselves. That's never our customs. So the bitter constraint was that now we have to, we were forced to partake in birthdays. You understand? That's not our custom. I'll give an example. Give me that in Job. Okay, give me Job 3. Birthdays is not our customs. So if you secretly wishing to do that, the Lord will put you to death. Give me uh, Job 3 verse 3. Watch this. Job chapter 3 verse 3. Let the day perish wherein I was born. Go ahead. And, and the night in which it was said, there is a man child conceived. You see what he's saying? He says, let the day perish wherein I was born. Meaning he's cursing that day. And the night in which it was said, there's a man child conceived, meaning I was born. Go ahead. 
Let that day be darkness. Mm. Let not God regard it from above. Go ahead. And they let the light shine upon it. You see that thing? But on this day, on those days, on the birthdays today, you see how people are with the, how they go crazy? When you don't say happy birthday to somebody, they get upset. You know, I just experienced that when I was in the Bundus, when I went to see my parents. Listen, it was my father's birthday. I did not say nothing to him. They bought him a cake. I excused myself. I was far. I left the house. I left the yacht even. And I could hear it from afar. They were screaming so loud, singing happy birthday to him. So an hour later when I came back, I think I was speaking to Brother Bezilier. When I came back, he, he kept hinting, you know, it's my birthday and all. As if I'm going to say something, I said nothing. You understand? They need to be worshipped because that's what that thing creates. It creates monsters. Okay, that's why it was never our custom. Because we understood Exodus 20 verse 3. Okay, let's go back. Second Maccabees 6 uh, verse 7 again. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 7. Go ahead. And in the day of the king's birth, every month, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifice. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, Bacchus the Jews were... Is, Bacchus is, is, is the Labor Day parade that is celebrated in the Caribbean islands every year. Bacchus. Go ahead. The Jews were compelled to go to go in procession to Bacchus, mm -hmm. carrying ivy. So now we were forced, we were compelled, forced to partake in bed days, you understand? Bacchus and all that. Okay, go ahead. Moreover, they went out a degree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. Uh -huh. by, the, by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews. Against the Jews. This, so these feasts, they were, they were published throughout where the Greeks was ruling. You understand? Ptolemy, because Ptolemy was one of Alexander's generals. So he made sure that this decree was, was pushed out to the heathens, but particularly against the Jews, because the Jews were scattered among these heathens to push Greek philosophy and Greek religion and culture. Go ahead. Meaning Hellenists, they were Hellenizing us. Go ahead. Against the Jews, that they should observe the same fashions. That they what? That they should observe the same fashions. That they should observe the same fashions, like birthdays and so forth. Go ahead. And be partakers of their sacrifices. And be partakers of their sacrifices. Read on. Next verse. Watch this. And whoso would not conform whoso themselves... Would not what? And whoso would not conform. Whoso would not conform, meaning act like, be like, dress like, talk like, partake full 100% in Greek culture and philosophies. You understand? Whoso would not conform. Remember it says, be not conformed to this world. Don't forget the point, what we read in Romans 12. Be not conformed to this world. During the time of the Greeks, we was forced to conform. You understand? So it is today. Go ahead. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So the present misery that was, that was, that was to our forefathers back then is the same misery today. Because today, the way they are forcing birthdays is that they are forcing these, not just birthdays, but all these um, customs that they are celebrating. You understand? If, let's say, um, now is the quote-unquote women's month. You see the way women behave at the shops? They are so disrespectful because why? Because they're expecting to be treated with, they're, they're expected to, they, they expect to be put on a pedestal. That's what I've been observing ever since this so-called women's month started. I'm telling you. I've been seeing that actually. So we were forced to conform. So let's go back to Romans 12 so we can, now we understand what it's saying. Here. 
Rome is chapter 12, verse 2. Go ahead. And be not conformed to this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, meaning what? Be a chaste version unto Christ. You are a new creature in Christ now. You're no longer walking after the customs of the heathens. You're no longer worshiping idols. You understand? Committing all men of abominations before the Lord. Because why? You're no longer conformed to this world, but you are transformed by the, you have been transformed by the renewal of your mind. You have reformed your heart. You've subdued your own understanding. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is, what is that good and mm. acceptable and perfect will of God. So you must prove what is good. How you prove it, you apply it. You understand? You must prove that the Bible is good and, and that's how you're going to be acceptable and you're going to what? You're going you're gonna to understand the perfect will of the Lord that will be acceptable. Okay? So when it says chaste virgin, so these 10 virgins, when it says virgins, we know the virgins making reference to Israel. You understand? But he says they are virgins. Why? Because they what? They have now repented. They all, they all understand that they are Israel. Let me put it like that way for now. Okay? Watch this. Give me. Now let's go back to Roman, Matthew 25. Let's go back there. I definitely think I've caught something. Matthew 25, read verse 1 again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So now we understand when it says virgins now. It says, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Let's understand that lamp right there. Okay? Watch this. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of... Huh. I don't think I want to go there yet. Give me Exodus 27 verse 20. Let me see something. You know what? No, let me keep it simple. Give me Proverbs 6, 23. Let's start there first. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. Read that. For the commandment is a lamp. For the commandment is a lamp. Come on. And the law is light. And the law is light. The law is light. The law is light. He says, which took their lamps. So the law, the, the commandment is a lamp. So when it says, which took their lamps, meaning what? They took the commandments. Okay. They applied the commandments of the Mosai. Read. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So now go back to Matthew 25, verse 1 again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Uh -huh. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So when he says took their lamps, now we understand the lamp, this is the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp and the law is light. The law is light. Okay, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 22. Matthew 22, verse 2. This is a parable. Start at verse 1. Matthew, chapter 22, verse 1. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said. By parables, meaning proverbs. Go ahead. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king. Mm. Which made marriage, which made a marriage for his son. So the king is the most high, he made marriage for his son. His son is Jesus the Christ. So when he says the bridegroom, he's talking about the bridegroom is a what? Masculine, that's man. Because we are the bride, feminine. He is the groom. Okay. That's what it says, because I am married unto you. That's what we read in Jeremiah 3. For I am married unto you. So go back to Matthew now, 25 verse 1 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. To meet the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Christ is the bridegroom. Go ahead. 
and five of them were wise and five and five were foolish so now we get to it we're getting a better understanding you've got 10 virgins which know their israel you understand it says they took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom five of these 10 was wise the rest was foolish okay so now you see a separation of among these 10 virgins you've got five wise five foolish Let's deal with the wise ones. Give me that in Psalms 19 verse 7. Psalms chapter 19 verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect. Mm -hmm. Converting the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. He says the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. So these, what, what made these, ten, these five versions to be wise was the laws of God. God's commandments made them wise. Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 9. Come on. And moreover, because the preacher was wise. Because the what? Because the preacher was wise. The preacher is talking about, this is King Solomon speaking about himself. Because the preacher was wise. Wise. You understand? Because he kept the commandments. Go ahead. Because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. You see that thing? Because the, the five virgins that was wise, they had the commandments and in, they had understanding to teach the people knowledge. So the five virgins that was what that has wisdom, they had wisdom enough to go out and teach the people the knowledge. You understand? Read. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. And set in order many proverbs, meaning many parables. He expounded those parables unto the people. You understand? Give me Romans 10 verse 14. Romans 10 verse 14. Read. Right? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him on whom they have not heard? And how shall they wear and how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they what? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall the people hear without a preacher? Because the preacher was wise and he still taught the people knowledge. So they, the, way, the only way they are going to believe, you understand? The only way they are going to believe if the preacher goes to them and teach them the knowledge of the Lord. You understand? The only way they're going to hear about Christ is, when the, is if the preacher goes out and teaches them the law, the way of the Lord. They could understand that because what the preacher was wise. He had wisdom to go out and teach the people. You understand? Read on, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Except they be sent. That's why we go out there because the Lord has sent us, has sent us to the people to teach them. Go ahead. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. That do what? And bring, that preach the gospel of peace. That preach the gospel of peace. That's what, why? Because there's no peace upon this earth. And we as a nation, we have no peace because we're in captivity. We're under duress and distress. We're oppressed and depressed. So we need deliverance so we can have peace among us and there will be peace on earth. Go ahead. And bring glad tidings of good things. And bring glad tidings of good things. That glad tidings is the good news. Okay. Now, um, give me the book of Exodus 35 verse 10. Exodus chapter 35 verse 10. Go ahead. And every wise hearted among you shall come. And what? And, make, and every wise hearted among you shall come. Every wise hearted, wise hearted, meaning what? 
They've got wisdom in their mind because they are renewed in the spirit of their mind. Go ahead. And make all that the Lord has commanded. And make all that the Lord has commanded. Because they were commanded by the Most High God, they did it. That's why, that's why they did it, because they had wisdom. Every wild hearted among you. 31, Exodus 31 verse 6. Read that. Exodus 31 verse 6. And I, behold, I have given him, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, uh -huh. And in the hearts, and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom. You see that thing? He says, "In the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom." Read right? that they may make all that I have commanded thee. That they what? That they may make all that I have commanded thee that they make all that I've commanded thee because they had the spirit of wisdom in them because wisdom is a spirit like we was going over last night. Let's go back. Matthew 25 verse 2 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 2. The five of them were wise and five were foolish. And five was foolish. Let's see what made these five virgins to be fools. Give me that in uh, First Samuel chapter 13 verse 13. First Samuel chapter 13 and verse 13. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Read. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God. You see that thing? What made him foolish was because he did not keep the commandments of the Mosai. So those five foolish virgins was because they were not keeping the commandments. Meaning what? They knew they were Israel, but they were not applying the commandments. They had the book of the law with them, but they did not apply. That's what made them fools. Go ahead. Thou hast not kept the commandments of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Now go back to Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25 verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Five were wise, five was foolish. Go ahead, verse 3. They, were, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Read that again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them you see what he's saying they those that were foolish they took their lambs and took no oil with them remember that this bible is a, is a lamp you understand but they took no oil remember the bible is a book of laws but they took no oil with them i get the the job of the oil is to keep because okay if it's just that some of you are still young but I remember like when I was when I was still a youngin, okay. There was no electricity and all of that. So we used to have this thing, but a lantern. We used to have lantern. Okay. A lantern is like a light. So you put oil in there. So the oil in this case would be paraffin, okay, and little oil. And then we put it in there, you just switch it on. And then as long as the oil is still in there, the lamp will keep burning. You understand? The oil is finished, the lamp is not going to go on. So that's, what, that's the analogy here. So we still even have it, uh, the bundus. It says, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Now we understand what the lamp is. The commandment is a lamp and the law is light. But they took no oil with them. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus 27, verse 20. Exodus chapter 27, verse 20. Go ahead. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive beaten from the light, for the light. No, 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 read that right, read that right. Come on, come on. 
Exodus chapter 27 verse 20. And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive beaten for the light. Uh -huh. To cause the lamp to burn always. You see that thing? That's exactly what I just explained now with the lantern. It says, and thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring thee pure oil, olive, beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. So in order for you to keep that lamp, the fire burning, you must have the oil. You understand? To keep the fire burning, it says, oil, olive for the light. Go back to Proverbs 6.23 again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the, and the law is light. And the law, and the law, the law is light. The law is light. Go ahead. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And reproofs of instructions, the reproofs of the instructions of the commandments is the way of life. Application of God's commandments. That's how you're going to make sure that the lamp keep burning always when you apply. Because when you apply, that's when you get a good understanding of what's going on. Go back to Exodus 27 verse 20. Exodus chapter 27 verse 20 Read And thou shalt command the children of Israel That they bring thee Pure oil olive Beaten for the light mm -hmm. To cause the lamp to burn always Now Exodus 29 verse 7 Exodus chapter 29 verse 7 Go ahead Then shalt thou take the anointing oil Mm -hmm. And pour it upon his head and anoint him. He says, thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Watch this. Give me Psalms 23 verse 5. Psalms 23 verse 5. You must take this anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Psalms chapter 23 verse 5. Read. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Uh -huh. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So now you notice this is a heavy verse. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The table, give me that in some uh, Isaiah 30 verse 8. Let's see what the table is. First and foremost. Then we're coming back here. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table uh -huh. and note it in a book. And note it in a book. So the table is the book which is the Holy Bible. Go ahead. That it may be for the time to come forever and ever. The time to come is now. So go back to Psalms 23 verse 5 again. Psalms chapter 23 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Stop right there. So it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So this table, which is the Bible, is actually the what? The oil. The understanding. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Right now we are in the presence of our enemies. The Lord is preparing a table before us in, the, in their presence. Thou anointest my head with oil. So this table, which is the book of the law, is the oil that is going to anoint your head. Read verse 5 again so I can catch my thought. Yes, sir. Proverbs 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. It says, my cup runneth over. So this cup that runs over is the understanding. You understand? This is talking about... Ah, on. This cup that runneth over is the understanding of the scriptures. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Watch this. Uh, go back to Exodus 29 verse 7. Exodus chapter 29 verse 7. 
Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Read that again. Exodus chapter 9 verse 7. Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head. You say and you, shall take that, you shall take the anointing oil, pour it upon his head and anoint him. So this holy anointing oil is what? He's talking about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures. That's the spiritual understanding of what we just read in Exodus. Give me Psalms 141 verse 5. Psalms chapter 141 verse 5. Come on. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be, it shall be a kindness. Okay, read that right. Psalms of the 141, verse 5. Read. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. Uh -huh. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. It shall be a what? Which, it shall be an excellent oil. Because the righteous is going to reprove you with the what? With the scriptures. The laws of God. That's an excellent oil. Go ahead. It shall be an excellent oil. Uh -huh. We shall not break my head. We shall not what? Which shall not break my head. We shall not break your head because instead of breaking your head is going to what? You're going to receive understanding because when you are corrected, you apply the correction, you grow in the spirit. So you're going to get understanding not to repeat the same mistakes. Go ahead. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. So now let's go back. Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25 and verse, verse 3 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 3. Go ahead. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And took no oil with them. No understanding. They did not have understanding. Watch this. Give me Sarag 12. Sarag 12 verse 11 I believe. Hold on. Wait a second. I think I just. I was just shooting from the hip on this one. Yep. Yeah, 21 verse 11. I'm mixing them up. Sarag 21 verse 11. This flu is really messing me up now. Sarag 21 verse 11. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 11. He that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. Read. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. So now, he that keepeth the law of the Lord getteth the understanding thereof. You keep the commandments, you're going to receive understanding. That's the same thing. Give me that in Psalms 111 and 10. Because the foolish, they did not take the oil. So they have no understanding. Okay, read that. Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 verse 10. Read. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A his good understanding, hold on. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. So to get that understanding, you must keep, keep you, because you have the lamp, but you must have understanding. So in order for you to get that understanding, you must apply God's commandments to your life. Then you receive not just any type of understanding, but a good understanding you will receive. So the foolish versions, they took their lamps, but they took no oil, no understanding because they did not apply. That's the key. You understand? They didn't apply the scriptures. Give me that in Proverbs 4 verse 7. They didn't apply. One thing again, uh, one thing is true is that this Bible right here is about change. You understand? And our people don't want to change. That's why they don't want, they will not receive understanding if they don't make a decision to apply what is written in this book. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Proverbs 4 verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. You know what? Start of verse 5. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 5. Uh -huh. Get wisdom. Get understanding. You see what he said? Forget it not. Get wisdom. Get understanding. 
You get wisdom, yes. But guess what? You must get understanding with the wisdom you got because you are applying. Go ahead. Forget it not. Mm -hmm. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. The words of the Lord's mouth is this Bible. Meaning what? Don't reject it. Let's hold this. Go back to 2 second, second Kings 17 verse 15 now. Let's read that again. Let's read, some, let's read the same chapter. But I want to I wanna specifically, I want certain verses now. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 15. Watch this. It says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Meaning what? Don't reject it. Watch what we did when we was, before we came into this truth. And by the way, in this truth, some brothers and sisters, they are still rejecting it. 2 Kings 17, verse 15. Read that. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 15. Go ahead. And they replaced his statutes. No, 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 no. Verse 15 again. Second Kings chapter 17, verse 15. And they rejected his statutes. They rejected. They rejected. They declined his statutes. Read on. And his covenant that he made with their fathers. Read. And his testimonies which is testified against him. Come on. And they followed vanity. Meaning lies. They followed lies. Philosophies, like we read about in Colossians 2 verse 8. Go ahead. And became vain. They became vain. And That's what our people are right now. Vain. Go ahead. And went after the heathen that were around about them. You see that thing? So after the de de declining the laws of God, rejecting the, the commandments, he says, they were, we went after the heathen that were round about them. That's what's going on today. Go ahead. Concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. They should, we should not do like them, meaning we should not follow after their footsteps. Go ahead. Next verse. Watch this. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. You see that thing? So the rejection of his statues, that's, that's what he's explaining it again. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. Because we what we walked after the customs of the heathens, we followed after them. So when we when we did that, we left all the commandments of the Lord our God. Go ahead. And made them molten images. And they did what? And made them molten images. And may and made them molten images. Today you see our people be wearing the cross. Okay, they'll be wearing the ankh, so on and so forth. Go ahead. They'll be wearing beads. You understand? Saying, you see, look at my African beads. I look deep, brother. Go ahead. And made them molten images. Uh -huh. Even two calves. And made a grow. And worshipped all the host of heaven. And served Baal. You see that thing? That's what we did. That is what we did. And so now, when, when we read in Proverbs, hold this, watch this. Um, read verse 34. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 34. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 34. And to this day, they do after the former manners, they fear not the Lord. You see, that neither thing? it says, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. and to this day, 2021, and to this day, they do after the former manners, meaning what our old wickedness today is still the same. Read, neither do they after their statutes, come on, or after their ordinances, or after the law. And commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. So now we are not working after none of that unto this day. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead, verse 35. With whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged him, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, uh -huh. nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. No sacrifice to them. Today, our people are doing that. Saving these other gods and sacrificing unto them and what? And worshiping them. 
bowing themselves down to those things. Okay. Go back to Proverbs 4, verse 5 again. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Read. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. You see what he's saying? When you love wisdom, guess what? She will preserve thee. She will keep thee. Go ahead. Verse 7. Verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. The most important thing, wisdom. Go ahead. Therefore, get wisdom. Therefore, get all... wisdom. Get wisdom because it's the principal thing, is the main thing. Go ahead. And with all thy getting, get understanding. So with that wisdom, you must get understanding. How do you get understanding? You apply. In all wisdom is the performance of the law. Sarak 19 verse 20. In all wisdom is the performance of the law. If you perform the law, you will get wisdom and you will get understanding with that wisdom. Sarak 19 verse 20. Read that. Ecclesiastes 19 verse 20. The fear of the Lord is all wisdom. And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. You see that part right there? And in all wisdom is the performance of the law. So coming back, bringing, keeping it simple because Israel is slow. The key is you give counsel, you, apply, you must apply that counsel. Now, brothers and sisters are like going through stuff, okay? Whatever issues you are dealing with, the counsels that we've had, okay, apply those counsels. Because if you don't apply, you're not going to get understanding of why these things are happening. You will see, but you're not going to really have understanding of why and what you must do to get rid of it. And you'll wonder why this thing just keeps happening over and over. And every single time, the devil always knocks me out in the first round. What's the problem? Because you have no understanding. You are that foolish version. You have the lamp, but you have no oil. You understand? The oil is gone. The oil is finished. So how is the lamp, how is the light going to keep burning when the oil is finished? That's not going to happen. And the only way to keep the lamp burning, you must have the oil for the lamp to continuously burn, for the understanding to continuously grow. You must apply what is written. Okay, watch this. Let's go back. Matthew. Matthew 25 and verse 4. Read there. Matthew chapter 25 verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Read that again verse 4. Matthew chapter 25 verse 4. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But the wise, the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They took understanding. So when it says the wise took, the, took oil in their vessels, meaning what? They have understand because the wise understand what? Give me that in Sarak 1. Ecclesiasticus chapter 1. This is what the wise understand. I think it's verse 26. Read that. Proverbs 1, verse 26. No, no, Sirach. Ecclesiastes 1, 26. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. You see that thing? If you desire wisdom, you will keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. Here's what I'm noticing, right? Let me just... Tangent, small tangent. Here's what I have noticed. There are certain classes that go out. I'm noticing that when I've been talking to brothers, they don't understand. It just went over their heads. And it's not dark parables. It's not parables, just milk. Okay? And here's another thing I'm noticing. I'm noticing that when a class goes out and you are 
you know, shock therapy. You see brothers be making haste to seek counsel, right? And then they'll do it for that first week. You know, I'll get brothers coming for counsel. Then the following weekend, the following week, or then the other following week, you don't hear nothing. Until another two, three months has passed, and then another class comes out for counsel, then brothers and sisters, they line up for counsel. That's the pattern I've been seeing so far. You know why? Because the oil is not there. The oil is not there. You understand? So you move by emotions. Because when now you are you 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 put under pressure because the fear of the Lord is on you, now you feel the need, okay, let me seek counsel. And then that energy just goes down, and then it's like ah, back to nigger again, nigger mode again. Nigger mode is like the default setting. That's what I'm seeing. That's been my observation so far with among men and women. Read that again. Sarag 126. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 26. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. And the Lord shall give her unto thee. You keep the commandments, the Lord will give you unto, will give you wisdom. Watch this. Give me Sarag 24 now. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 19. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 24, verse 19. Come unto me, O ye that be desirous of me. Come on. And fill yourselves with my fruits. You see what? This is wisdom now. It says, come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me. If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments. So all those that are desirous of wisdom, it says, you must fill yourself with 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 what with the fruits that comes with wisdom. You can read about those fruits in Galatians five. Okay, let's go back. You know what? Hmm. Give me Psalms one. How can I forget that one? Let me go to Psalms because you see the wise the wise the the wise virgins. They took their lamb and they took they took their lambs and their oil with them. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter one, and verse three. You know what? Let's start at verse one. Psalms chapter one, verse one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seats of the scornful. I'll give an example of this. What we're reading here is, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay? No sitters in the seat of the scornful, no sitters in the, no what? No standeth in the way of sinners, no sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I'll show you what, what this actually is going into. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay? Ecclesiasticus. In, I think it's in the, in the Apocrypha. Sirach 27 verse 12. Watch this. You know what? Yeah, verse 12. Then we're going to jump up. Sarah 27, verse 12. Ecclesiastes 27, verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet. The indiscreet is what? The indiscreet is the counsel of the ungodly. The way of sinners, the seat of the scorn, the scornful, the sinners, the counsel of the ungodly, that's the indiscreet. That's our people that hate this truth. That's brothers and sisters that don't want to hear the laws 24 hours a day in the truth. Go ahead. Observe the time. Observe the time. Meaning what? You can spend less than five minutes with them if it goes beyond. Because And by the way, another thing is they can see when, you, when you're about to get up because now you don't want to sit anymore. You don't want to talk. You don't want to continue that conversation. You have somewhere to go. They can see it. They'll try to extend the conversation that you stay longer. Their spirit knows this. <laughs> Excuse me. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 27 verse 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. But be continually 
among men of understanding. But he says, but be continually among men of understanding. This man that we're reading about in Psalms chapter one, that's the wise virgin right there. I'm giving you the character of the wise virgin. When he's among the indiscreet, he's always observing the time. Now read the verse above it. Read verse 11. Verse 11. The discourse of a godly man is always with wisdom. Is always, always with wisdom. The discourse meaning the character of a godly man is always with wisdom. Because everything you do, you always filter in through the laws of God. Go ahead. But a fool changeth as the moon. But the fool changeth as the moon. I'll give an example of that. I know some of you are yeah, young. I don't know if you used to, used to listen to Tupac. I used to back in the day. There's an album. I think is Thug Life or something. I think, yeah, Thug Life. In there, you've got, you've got uh, Brenda has a baby, something like that. Brenda's got a baby. You know, this woman um she fell pregnant now she has to take care of the baby by herself and so on and so forth the next songs that you hear i mean one minute he's saying brenda is a baby so he is thinking about the community the next the next song you hear something completely different now he's talking about shooting guns being a thug and all of that well you see like the full changes as the moon just confused noise yeah. Okay, confused noise. All right. Now, let's go back to Psalms now. Chapter 1, verse 1. Psalms, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that worketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Read. But his delight... Is in the law of the Lord. But his delight, and, delight, his joy, mm, his joy is in the law of the Lord. Go ahead. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. In his law doth he meditate day and night. He's meditating. You understand? Go ahead. And he shall be like a tree uh -huh. plant, planted by the rivers of water. The commandments that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. That bringeth his forth his fruit in his season. You understand? Meaning his understanding in his season. Go ahead. His leaf also shall not wither. His leaf, and his understanding, his understanding, his leaf also, also shall not wither. His understanding will not wither. Because he's got what? He's got oil with his lamp. Go ahead. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he does will prosper. Give me that in Deuteronomy 29 verse 9. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Deuteronomy 29 verse 9. Read that. Deuteronomy 29 verse 9. Go ahead. Keep therefore the words of this covenant uh -huh. and do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do. You see that thing? Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 9. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that ye do. You see that thing? So this is where prosperity comes from. When you keep the words of the covenant and you do them, then you will prosper in all that you do. And you see that, you see that part when it says that ye may that ye may prosper in all that you do. The reason why they're using the word may there is because some are going to keep the words of this covenant, some will not. And if you don't, you are not going to prosper. That's why you're using the word may there. I'll give an example. Give me 2 Kings chapter 18. This is during the time when Hezekiah took the throne. Hezekiah was a righteous king. So those of you that have been doing your four chapters, you'll understand what I'm bringing out here. Second Kings chapter 18, third verse 1. We're going to jump. Second Kings chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of 
Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Jump down to verse. Uh, jump down to verse three, because Hezekiah, like I said, he was a righteous king. Go ahead. Verse three. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. Jump down to verse five. Verse five. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, mm. so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor any that were before him. Read. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him, Come on. but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. Read. And the Lord was, and the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. Go praise to the Most High. So Hezekiah was a righteous king. He prospered, and the Lord was with him because he what? He trusted in the Lord God of Israel. That's the key right there. You understand? So go back to Psalms chapter 1. Psalms chapter 1 verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Just like Hezekiah was prospering because he trusted in the Lord God of Israel and the Lord was with him. And guess what? He prospered as a king and the kingdom prospered because of him as well. Because he applied that which was commanded of him. Okay, because he was he was a wise virgin. He was he was an example of that wise virgin. Okay, Matthew twenty five, Matthew chapter twenty five, verse five. Now, come on. Matthew chapter twenty five, verse five. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Read that again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. It says, while the bridegroom, meaning while Christ waited, that's where tarried means, while Christ waited, because he's the bridegroom in verse 1, they all slumbered and slept. While he tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Give me the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. While the bridegroom tarried, while Christ waited, they all slumbered and slept. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Read that. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. Come on. I will go and return to my place mm -hmm. till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction they will seek me early. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will go and return to his place. That's X1 and 9. Till they acknowledge their offense, because we have sinned against the Lord, and seek my face. Hold on. And seek my face. The face of the Lord is this Bible. In their affliction, in their trouble, we will seek him early. So right now, the Lord is waiting for Israel to get themselves together. That's why it says, while the, while the bridegroom tarried, tarried to what? Tarried. Waiting for Israel to get themselves together, waiting for his return, waiting for, for him to, waiting for the second coming of Christ. The bridegroom is waiting to come back. But be, while he's waiting, Israel must get themselves together. But he's saying, while he waited, they all slumbered and slept. So let's go back to Matthew now. Matthew 25. Verse 5 again. Matthew chapter 25, verse 5. Go ahead. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. They all slept. They all. All. Who's the all? The, the ten virgins, including the five that was wise, they also slumbered and slept. The foolish ones, I mean, that's a default. That's by default. But he says they all, that's the key right there, all, all of them, they slumbered and slept. 
because you can, if you think is the five foolish ones, well, that's not true because he says they all slumbered and slept. You understand? Next verse. Come on, verse six. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Mm -hmm. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Read verse six again. Matthew chapter 25, verse six. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So now what he's saying, it says, verse 5 says, they, and they all slumbered and slept. Verse 6 says, and at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So it couldn't have been the virgins because he says they all slumbered and slept. So who made the cry? Because it says at midnight there was a cry that was made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. Because we're going to deal with they all slumbered and slept. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. This is the condition of the slumbering and the sleeping. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, come that on. all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Because of what? Because of breaking, if we break God's commandments. So when we slumbered and slept, is because we all broke the commandment. That's why it says they all slumbered and slept. We all broke the commandments. That's when we all slumbered and slept. Give me Romans chapter 3, verse 23 real quick. Romans 3, verse 23. We all slumbered and slept. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. All have slumbered and slept. So the condition of, of the basis for our be us slumbering and sleeping is because of sin. Because when we sinned, the most that God did what? Give me that in Daniel 9 verse 11. When we slumbered and slept, read that. Daniel 9 verse 11. Daniel chapter 9 verse 11. Go ahead. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law. You see that Even thing? by departing. He, hold on. He's telling you in Romans 3 verse 23 when he says, For all have sinned. That's all Israel that have sinned. Go ahead. Even by departing. We departed from the laws. Come on. That they might not obey thy voice. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The what? The curse is poured upon us. Therefore, because we didn't, we departed from the laws of the laws of the Mosai, the curse is poured upon us. Go ahead. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Read. And he has confirmed his words, which he spake against us. And us and against our judges that judged us. By bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven has not been, has not been done as has been done upon Jerusalem. Under the whole heaven, meaning on the whole earth, nothing has come upon us. No nation has gone through what we've gone through. So now we're gonna deal upon we're gonna deal with the curses that was poured, was poured upon us because we what we departed from the laws of God. So Deuteronomy 28 now, verse 37. He says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. We slumbered and we slept. What happened? We went into slavery. That's what it means. We slumbered and slept. Read that. Deuteronomy 28 verse 37. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword among all nations whether the Lord shall lead thee. So now, before we get this, actually, watch this. 
Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Ray. thou shalt see it no more again. Come on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. So now he says, because of breaking God's commandments, the Lord says, I'm going to bring you into Egypt again. I'm going to bring you into slavery again. This time with ships, cargo slave ships. The way Moses explained it, he says, we shall see, no, we shall see our homeland no more again. And there, once we get off the slave ships, we will be sold to our enemies for bond men, meaning slave men and bond women. And bond, and bond women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. No one is going to redeem us out of these curses. So now, when once we are delivered into the hands of our enemies, Deuteronomy 28 verse 64, now read that. Because we, was, we, would be, we would be delivered into the hands of our enemies on slave ships. That's one of the ways that we would be delivered into the hands of our enemies. And we would be sold to these enemies. Okay? Verse 64. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 64. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Under the whole heaven. When it says from the one end of the earth, even unto the other, under the whole heaven. Go ahead. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Because when we were scattered among all these nations, we would serve their gods, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, you understand, Scientology, Egyptology, you understand, politics, religion, democracy, all of that. So, guess what? These philosophies that we would be learning, because we are in captivity now, we are delivered, we were sold, we are slaves, serving the gods of these nations. Now we are in captivity, we have slumbered and slept. In the lens of our captivity, we are learning foreign doctrines that will defile our spirits. You understand? So much so that, read verse 37 now. Because this is what our enemies would do to us once we are in those lands. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, mm. a proverb. And a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. So once we are now in the lands of our enemies, guess what? Our names and our nationalities would be changed. You see that thing? We will become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword. Your nationality is going to be changed. You are not going to be called Israel anymore. You are going to be called Mopedi. You are going to be called Motonga. You are going to be called a Congolese. That's what you're going to be called in the lands of our captivity. Among all nations, whether the Lord will lead thee. Our names and our nationalities, our culture, everything will be taken from us. We all slumbered and slept. So going back to... Let's go back to Matthew now. 25 verse 6. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now, remember, we're in captivity, right? Now, when we're in captivity, it says we all slumbered because all Israel, we broke God's commandments. Now we're in captivity. Then it says there was a cry made. There was a, who made the cry when everybody was slumbered and slept? When everybody is in captivity, meaning what? Spiritually dead. Proverbs 21, 16, read that. The walking dead. Proverbs 21, verse 16. Go ahead. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So now we were in captivity, we are wandering out of the way of understanding. What are we wandering in? We are wandering in philosophy, politics, democracy, whatsoever, whatsoever. So 
We are wandering out of the way of understanding and says we shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Spiritually dead. Mentally gone. You understand? So now, watch this. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Excuse. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. The soul, the soul be without knowledge. The soul that is without knowledge, give me Malachi 2 verse 7. The soul that is without knowledge, because when we are now in the congregation of the dead, yes, we are souls, but we have no knowledge. Okay, Malachi 2 verse 7. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Go ahead. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, uh -huh. and they should seek the law at his mouth. They should what? And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek the law at his mouth. So the knowledge is the law, which is the commandments. So go back to Proverbs 19, verse 2 again. Proverbs 19, verse 2. Also, that the soul be without knowledge. So the soul in captivity, because we have slumbered and slept, the soul in captivity... Okay, it says without knowledge, without law. Come on. It is not good. It is not what? It is not good. So a soul that is without knowledge is not good. It's not profitable. You understand? Because you are spiritually dead. Walking zombies. Go ahead. It is not good. And he that hasteth with his feet sinneth. Because the soul that is without knowledge will haste with their feet. Because they will what? They will just run into mischief all the time. Because they have nothing guiding them to tell them, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is right, do this, avoid that. Nothing is, they, they have no guideline to tell them that. Because in captivity, while we are slumbered and slept, we are being given license to indulge in our wickedness. You understand? That's what Christianity is there for, to do that. Okay, now go back to Matthew now, 25 verse 6 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6. Read. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So now at midnight, while they all slumbered and slept. Remember now, we are in captivity. We have slumbered and slept. Now it says at midnight... There was a cry that was made. Imagine this thing. Imagine, just imagine, right, at midnight when it's quiet, everybody's sleeping, okay, in an ideal world. Everybody's sleeping. You understand? Then you hear this cry that is made. Everybody's going to hear that because at night, noise travels fast. It's loud. You can hear it. He says there was a cry that was made. Watch this. Give me the book of Malachi 4 verse 4. This is the cry that was made while they all slumbered and slept. Watch this. Read that thing. Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Mm, you know what? Could you put some energy in your reading? Read verse 4 again. Matthew chapter... Malachi chapter 4 verse 4. Go ahead. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Remember, because we've done for God. That's why there was a cry made. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Go ahead. Which I commanded unto him in Horeb for uh -huh. all Israel. Read. With the statutes and judgments. With the statutes and judgments. Come on. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. I will do before, what? I will send you Elijah the prophet. I will send you Elijah the prophet. Come on. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. This is letting you know that he is not talking about, because remember, this is Malachi. Okay, after Malachi, where did we go? We went to uh, the Greeks. So it says, before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So obviously, he's not talking about 
during the time of Rome, because when Christ walked the earth during the time of Rome, it was the, the, that was not the, day, the, the great and dreadful day of the Lord. No, it wasn't. The second coming, that's the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So what is he saying? He is telling you that before the second coming of the Messiah, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet. And he's going to find the sons and daughters slumbered and slept. He's going to find us all slumbering and all sleeping. And he's going to make a cry. He's going to wake us up. He says, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 6, come on. Verse 6. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Because the heart of the children right now is Facebook and Instagram. Go ahead. And the heart of the children to their fathers. And the heart of the children will be turned back to their fathers now. Go ahead. Lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. You see that then before I bring forth judgment on this earth. So the Lord is saying, I don't want to bring forth judgment yet because I want my disciples to be sealed. Watch this. Give me Sarah 48. Sarah chapter 48 and verse 8. Watch this. Read. Sarah 48 verse 8. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 48 verse 8. Who anointed kings to take revenge and prophets uh -huh. To succeed after him. And prophets to succeed after him. We want to see who those prophets are. Read. Who was taken up in a whirlwind of fire. Mm. And in a chariot of fiery horses. That's talking about Elijah right there. Okay, come on. Who was ordained for reproofs in their times. So the prophet Elijah, for example, he was ordained for reproof in his time. To correct the people, to wake them up, to make the cry. Go ahead. To pacify the, the wrath of the Lord's judgment. Mm. Before it break forth into fury. And turn the heart of the father unto the son. Right. And restore Jacob. Then restore the tribes of Jacob. That's what Elijah would do. That's why the cry was made by him. Because he was sent by the Lord before the second coming of the Messiah. You understand? To restore the tribes of Jacob. Okay? That would, that's, what, that's what his job would be. To restore the tribes of Jacob. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. The heart of the fathers is this Bible. The children is us. You understand? Before judgment comes. That's what he's saying right there. Go back to Matthew. 25 and 6 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Mm. Go ye out to meet him. The bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Watch this. Give me uh, First Thessalonians. Give me First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. First Thessalonians. The bride, the, it says, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Watch this. Read that. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Come on. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Come on. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Meaning those brothers and sisters that die in this truth, it says they are going to be woken up first. Go ahead. That's some beautiful thing right there. Come on. Then we which are alive uh -huh. and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Come on. To do what? To, to meet the Lord in the air. You see that thing right there? It says, come me out to meet him. To meet the Lord in the air. The chariot, when he's picking up the saints, the elect, it says we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Go ahead. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Read on. Watch this. Verse 18. Wherefore, comfort one another 
with these words. He says, comfort one another with these words. These are comforting words right here. You ever feel some type of way? You must read this right here to comfort yourself and to comfort a brother or sister with these words. Because we're going to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we be ever with the Lord, meaning in the kingdom, forever and ever. You understand? Go back to Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, verse 6 again. Chapter 25, verse 6. Come on. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Mm -hmm. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Go ye out to meet him. Come on. Verse 8. Verse 7. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. He says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Meaning we got ourselves together. We got ourselves together. That's what we're doing right now. We're gathering ourselves together to get our minds right. Give me that in Sirach 2 verse 1. We arose. We trimmed our lamps. Meaning we got ourselves right. Sirach 2 verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, mm. prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare yourself to, for temptation. That's how we trim our lamb. We prepare our soul for temptation. We study, we apply, we pray. Read. Set thy heart aright. Get your mind and, right. And constantly endure. And constantly endure. Enjoy in this truth. Okay, come on. Enjoy the trials, the temptations. Read. And make not haste in time of trouble. Meaning don't run when trouble comes. Don't run away from this truth. Read. Cleave unto him. Cleave unto him. Read. And depart not away. Meaning what? Don't run away. Come on. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. That you may be increased at thy last end when the Lord returns. Read on. Whatsoever... Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art brought to a low, when thou art changed to a low estate. So whatever is brought upon you, it says take it cheerfully. Why? It says, and be patient when thou art brought to, when thou art changed to a low, a low estate. Because as a nation right now, we are at a low estate. We're at the bottom of all nations. It says, we must take it patiently. Why? Come on. Verse 5. Verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire. Read. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Because we have to go through adversity. We have to go through trials so that the Lord can purify us. And get rid of the unwanted uh, materials in our spirits, unwanted uncleanness, abominations in our the idols we worship, so that what we can be acceptable in the sight of the Lord when He returns. That's how we're gonna meet Him in the air when we have what when we have gone through the furnace of adversity. We've gone through trials. You understand? Let's go back Matthew twenty-five, verse eight. Matthew chapter 25 verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Read that again, verse 8. This is some heavy stuff right here. Read verse 8 again. Matthew chapter 25 verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. You see what the foolish said? The foolish said to the wise, the foolish virgin said to the wise servants, give us of your oil, meaning give us your understanding. For our lambs are gone out. Meaning what? We have no oil. We have no understanding. Why? Because there's no application. And this right here is where envy comes from. Is where strife comes from. Is where jealousy comes from. Is where hatred comes from. It springs up from this right here. Read that again. This eight. Matthew chapter 25 verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. 
So the foolish, this is now the foolish are saying to the wise, give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. You see, what you need to understand is that if you don't humble yourself down to seek understanding, to seek counsel, you're going to be that foolish virgin whose oil has gone out. And when the Lord returns, you're not going to receive the kingdom. So what I'm saying is, you have the opportunity to actually ask questions. That's why I say study. When you ask questions, it doesn't have to be a long essay, okay? As you are studying. You must ask questions so you can receive understanding. There's a couple of people in the camp that are doing that. And I can see when I talk to them that they are studying. They are, they are studying they, and they have understanding of things that they, are read, that they read. So all praise to the most high for that. So for those brothers and sisters that are not doing that, you don't want to end up in verse 8. And I'm already seeing the consequences of verse 8. I'm already seeing that. You understand? Read verse 9, come on. Matthew chapter 25, verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You see what he's saying? He says, But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. Meaning, it's not going to be enough for us and you. You must, you must do what? You must apply so you can receive understanding. You understand? He says, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So to them that sell is them that teach. And buy for yourself, meaning a land. Meaning put in the work. Because it's not going to fall from the sky. You have to actually put in some work to get to receive understanding. I mean, this is the greatest, the holiest book on earth. You mean to tell me that the Lord is just going to hand it over to you like that? That's not going to happen. But a fool, that's what they say. A foolish version, that's what they think. They think it will just land on their lap. Okay? Go ahead. Verse 10. Verse 10. And while they went to buy... You know what? Hmm. He says, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Okay, keep going. Watch this. And while they went to buy, uh -huh. the, the bridegroom came. Come on. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Now, you don't, listen. At this, verse 10 is when it's too late. <laughs> he says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some of you don't understand that. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're still dragging your feet. You are still playing Sambo and Kung. Listen. It says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Meaning what? Fire and brimstone. Well, it's not going to happen now, but after a thousand years, that's when that that's the final judgment. But I mean, think about it. That's why it says there will be gnashing of this, be there'll be way they'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth on that day. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hmm. Man, this is some heavy stuff. I've got a huge headache. The flu is just, you know. Is just toppling on my head, yeah. Ish. Now I can't go to all the, the, the precepts that I want to go to. Uh, Lord's will, I'll continue this. Uh, verse 9 and 10, just put a star on those two verses. We'll revisit them, okay? Just remind me of that, okay? I'm going to end the class right here, okay? Um, let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for laying his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, 
this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily. For as long as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Most High hand for that. All praise Amen. to the Most High. All praise to the Most High.